News Platform. Good evening and welcome to the show. State-owned enterprises are an important element of most economies. SOEs are most prevalent in strategic sectors such as energy, minerals, infrastructure and other utilities. Now, SOEs are ultimately owned by the general public and the government agencies that exercise the ownership rights are ultimately accountable to the general public. The recent IMF governance diagnostic report said that if SOEs are not well governed and transparent, they can be a very significant source of fiscal risk, contribute to poor service delivery outcomes for citizens and be breeding grounds for corrupt activities. How do we then reduce corruption vulnerabilities in the management of SOEs in Sri Lanka? Let's find out by talking to our guest tonight, Rehana Taufik. She's an economist and research consultant at the Advocata Institute. Good evening and welcome to the show, Rehana. Thank you. Uh, Rehana, um, let's uh, speak a bit about the importance for people to understand that it is their resources that, that are going in to salvage uh, state-owned enterprises that are uh, characterized by debt. So they are uh, debt ridden and chronically loss making. We keep hearing of loss making SOEs. Um, take us through this process of how state owned enterprises have got this bad rap, rap for being um, debt ridden for being loss making. Sure. So if you look at uh, historically how state-owned enterprises have evolved in Sri Lanka, when Sri Lanka gained independence, our economy was quite, you know, it was infantile, it was a new economy, uh, it was just coming out of um, British colonization, so the private sector was not very dynamic at, the, at that point. So obviously to kick start economic activity, the government had to get involved in setting up a lot of commercial activities and operating them. But now it is several decades since um, independence and we have come a long way, the private sector has come a long way, but unfortunately um, because of the policies that um, successive governments have had like in the 70s we had a very um, you know state-led industrial uh, import substitution that kind of policy and then of course we went to more liberalized policies and then we went back so all of this have contributed to growing the amount of SOEs that are there in Sri, in Sri Lanka mm. so we started from like 28 and then we got to 43 and then we got to hundreds and 200s and now we are at 450 I think so they are an important they were an important part of the economy but now given the situation that we are in and lot of the times the state-owned enterprises have contributed to the situation that we are facing in Sri Lanka if you look at the debt about nine point about ten percent of the total debt is SOE debt so they are a significant contributor and if you look at the policies that led to this for example um, energy subsidies these have been again you know things that keep feeding you know the people feed into the politicians politicians feed into the people and then you end up in this really vicious um, cycle that has culminated in massive amounts of debt being collected and massive amounts of um, accumulated losses and now you're once again faced with a situation where you have to now consider what are you going to do with these SOEs. Hmm. Now the uh, corporate governance and transparency of SOEs is very weak in Sri Lanka. Um, that is a fact that's known by everyone. Uh, the systems are extremely politicized. Uh, speak to us about this issue that has become quite cancerous. Sure. So if we look at, let's take for example, let's take a state-owned enterprise. Mm -hmm. The the real, the root cause of the problem stems from what we call a principal agent problem. Now that's a very simple thing, right? A principal are us. As you said, the people are the ones who own the SOE and the agents are the politicians and the ministers and the SOE managers who are appointed to run this. Now when you are in a situation where the general public is not able to um, sort of 
is not able to oversee the management of this company, the agents are now free to do whatever they want because they know there is no, um, there is no way for them to be held accountable by the principals. So now this is the classic problem that we are facing, right? All the all the SOEs are being run for the benefit of the SOE managers and the politicians and the ministers. So they appoint uh, if they want, you know, as during elections they appoint. Uh, they give jobs and they stack these people in the state-owned enterprises. When uh, you know when they want to use when they need office spaces for their election campaigns, they use the you know the SOE office spaces. So these are all abuse of power. Mm. So that is the main problem, the principal agent problem, right? Then so what what we need to, I mean, being a government is a very important task what the government has to do they are they have to make policies they have to make legislation they have to uh, be a regulator so it's it's a serious business the government right so imagine you trying to do all these serious things plus you're trying to run commercial enterprises also so it's it's almost like you're trying to be the umpire and the bowler at the same time mm. and obviously you're not going to end up in a you know that's not that's not a you know sustainable environment so the, it's and and running a business is also not easy so i mean running a government is difficult running a business is difficult so you should not be trying to do both right it is it is almost like when businessmen think that they can run the government it's not so easy it is a specialized area and it is you know it needs certain amount of expertise to to do so that's the first problem and then we go into what we call the uh, you know the budget constraint there's no budget constraint on state owned enterprises right i mean legally there is but if you look at the way the governments successive governments have been sort of it's like having a you know um, having parents who would just give you an allowance regardless of what you're doing with the money so it's like a bottomless pit it's a bottomless pit mm. well until uh, the the default it was the bottomless pit mm. so there is no constraints there are legal constraints but these you know sadly are not binding and these uh, earlier it was about 4.5% of gdp the amount of public debt that uh, soe debt right. but now that has been pushed and it's three times the original level so there there are no constraints and then um, price controls which are uh, you know uh, which is a tool that has been used by um, successive governments to, I would say, to win votes. And we see that in the energy sector, in the uh, fuel has been subsidized, electricity has been subsidized, and these are the big, the the big, um, big chunks of subsidies that are given out. So essentially, you are purchasing uh, fuel from abroad, the government, and then they are subsidizing and selling it to us. Mm -hmm. So the price controls are one. And then finally, of course, the major contributor, which is the corruption and the misgovernance, right. which is uh, which which is the reason that these uh, SOEs are so politicized. Uh, as you mentioned, there are very popular cases where, you know, brothers-in-laws and cousins of uh, very high you know, senior politicians have been appointed to uh, these boards of SOEs, even though they have little to no experience in that field, no qualifications. So all of this, you know, it's it's badly managed. It's managed for the benefit of um, the politicians and the SOE uh, managers, and ultimately it has led us to this situation. We are now, we are paying the price for this corruption. The public are paying the price because ultimately we are the owners, right? Right. Okay. We are in conversation with Rehana Taufik. We're going for a short commercial break. We'll be right back. People's Platform. TV One. TV for Life. Group of youth who escaped the clutches of terrorists in Myanmar 
reveal details of their ordeal. CID Raid Office of the Additional Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Saman Ratnayaka, in search of details behind the fake medicine scam. Former minister cannot evade responsibility. Many stakeholders demand for broader investigations. Kanchana challenges Anura again. Says no issue in the Punakari solar power project. Do not sell telecom. Trade unions protest. Who is the next presidential candidate? Vajira and Ravi reveals details of President Vikramasinghe's aspirations. Dilshan Madhushankar joins Mumbai Indians for 180 million rupees. Stock sold for the highest value in IPL history. is live in concert with Sirisa TV where music meets the spirit of the season Christmas with Gypsies back after 25 years to Bihara Mahadevi open air Sirisa Flashdown 23 Gypsies live in concert featuring BNS, Hana and Nadima get your tickets now media sponsors Sirisa TV and TV1 Taru pay in a discount. Enjoy up to 30% off on frames and sunglasses this Christmas with Vikramarachi Opticians. Rata ha dano kya ne? Rata arthi kya dano kya ne? Rata arthi kya dhan na? Abhi hamo utam vaga ki makte na. Abhi nitar vagaran ne? Ek ek ke naata chodana karan ne? Ek chodana valing isra ha dagi illa. Rata isra ha daraghe ne? Abhi hamo utam vaga ki makte na. Rata venu en? Perate. Inflation, exchange rates and the rise and fall of the stock market. Bringing you insights into the business world. Watch the business buzz every Tuesday at 9.30pm on TV1. platform we are watching the people's platform we're discussing how we can reduce corruption vulnerabilities in the management of state-owned enterprises we're in conversation with economist rehana taufik uh, rehana uh, when it comes to soes um, and the board of director appointments which we said are politicized um, we need to realize that the appointments need to be of skilled, competent, conscientious uh, persons with integrity to manage these valuable state assets. Uh, are there procedures, processes in place to ensure that this is being done at least on paper? On paper, I would say yes, but in practice, no. Right. And is that being questioned anywhere or are we collectively just blind to it? No, I think it's been questioned and if you look at the latest uh, the IMF report, the diagnostic report, I mean they specifically say that you have to institute better corporate governance. Mm. So that means you have to you know, get rid of the existing boards mm. and then you need to come up with a set of guidelines on how you can pick a new board and who can be on that board so obviously that would you know automatically leave out people who are not qualified who don't have the necessary expertise to be in suppose say avi aviation if you're not having that experience then you can't be on the board mm -hmm. it's an example and um, also it's not only about appointing the board about who has the power to appoint the board who has the power to dismiss the board of course. right yeah. and what are the powers of the board itself what is the mandate of the board itself these have to be clearly laid out mm -hmm. the board has to be mandated with managing 
the SOE in an efficient manner and they have to be given the tools and the necessary uh, you know their mandate needs to be stated you know their objectives should be clearly stated so that the board has you know always has this you know document they can go back to and say look this is our this is our mandate and we have delivered on it mm. and then they have to have a level of independence they have to be granted that independence so that you know ministers are not uh, able to influence them so that um, politicians are not able to influence the decisions they make and then there have to be um, you know there has to be that disconnect between who uh, runs the SOE and the uh, cabinet which is the policy maker so you make the policy as a cabinet member and you say this is the government policy and the SOE has to come up with their strategy and deliver on this policy so mm -hmm. that is how um, other well managers of SOEs like the Temasek which is uh, a Singaporean uh, you know holding company which overlooks uh, hundreds of uh, Singapore governments enterprises that it owns so there is that disconnect and the level of independence is granted to the board to do the rightful thing the IMF diagnostic report also says that the cent there is the central government's inappropriate intervention in SOE operation so there's political interference in staffing, recruitment, uh, procurement, always geared towards personal and political gain. Correct. Now what? So th that's what I'm saying. You need to institute proper corporate governance. And that means you need to get rid of, okay, if the current board is, uh, you know, okay, get rid of the current board because you don't know how they were appointed, right? Mm. And then you, of course, it's not easy because we have 400 odd uh, SOEs. And uh, if you're talking about, you know, replacing the boards of all of this, it's impossible, right? Yeah. So let's take the, the, the big fish mm. and look at uh, the boards that are there at the moment. And then you look at how can we, um, how can we reconstitute this board and how can we reconstitute the mandate of the board. Mm. Now, even that is a difficult task because, um, for example, in the, let's, let's uh, take the aviation industry as an example. Sometimes the cabinet members may not have the necessary expertise to pick uh, a proper chairman and a proper board for aviation, mm. right? But the, the purpose of this corporate governance structure is to ensure that you give, I mean, you do the best that you can. Obviously, there's no perfect solution, but you do the best. Mm. Now, uh, Rehana, the other thing is now when we talk about state-owned enterprises, um, there is a common misconception that okay the opposite of nationalization is privatization and this is the binary it's either this or that so could you take us through what options are available to us in terms of all of these SOEs that are loss making and uh, debt ridden so if they are loss making and debt ridden what do we do what are the options available? sure so when we say state-owned enterprise reform you are absolutely right there is always a divide it's either nationalizing or privatizing but there is a whole spectrum of reforms that can be done right. now for example the uh, electricity tariffs that were raised uh, in 2022 so that was you went from um, subsidizing electricity you went into cost reflective pricing and you instituted a full formula so that is also a reform right mm. then we go into uh, so privatization can be done in several ways as well so you can uh, divest a part of the state-owned enterprise for example by listing it in the Colombo stock exchange so the benefit of doing that is now this uh, state-owned enterprise will suddenly go from being uh, not being subject to many um, governance or many rules and regulations to so suddenly you are in the your list you are a publicly listed company so one example is you will have to on a regular basis uh, prepare and submit your annual reports for public uh, in the public domain now if if you look at all the SOEs 400 odd SOEs that we have at the moment only a very few have 
uh, publicly available annual reports at the moment right, right? most of the the are the SOEs either some have not even prepared the S reports for the last few years and uh, some of them have been submitted to the parliament but these are not always available in the uh, public domain so then you are subject to these proper transparency and disclosure uh, rules right, right. Then uh, another form of uh, privatizing is you allow, uh, so you don't do anything to the SO, the enter SOE itself, mm. but you allow private players to come into the market and operate. Right. So we are seeing that in the uh, full, full uh, petroleum distribution sector as well. Now we have a couple of foreign players who have come in. So that is also a part of the, the privatization process. And then of course we have to talk about liberalizing trade. So um, you know you need to allow, uh, you need to liberalize our trade policy. Because right now what it's doing is it's kind of contributing to making the situation worse because you have your um, you're not allowing foreign competition to come into Sri Lanka you're because you're you're stopping imports to a certain extent right mm. and that is not that through import bans but through you know you're making imports more expensive by slapping tariffs on them mm. so you need to allow competition to come in you need to um, have proper financial disclosure, uh, you know, standards, you need to, uh, you know, you need to bring in competition. So these are all reforms, uh, state-owned enterprise sector reforms. It's not just privatizing and it's mm. not just nationalizing. Right. Now, um, I, I started the program by saying that the general public are the owners of these uh, state-owned enterprises. But there is a disconnect between all of the corruption, all of the wrongs uh, that are taking place in SOEs and the people themselves in terms of their knowledge, awareness and um, the data that is available. So we have mechanisms like the Right to Information Act through which we can request uh, for information. Only the uh, SOEs uh, which are um you know subject to the guidelines if, if you're a publicly listed company then you have to uh, publish your accounts but other than that they, there are no rules saying that you have to publicly share this information but you have to prepare and submit it to parliament right uh, so this is considering that you are a state-owned enterprise and ultimately the owners of these are the general public this information must be prepared and shared with the people Absolutely. and it's not that uh, so th this kind of goes back to the initial problem I was talking about the principal and the agent problem right mm. now the, pr the people not don't necessarily have the expertise the time the resources to invest and comb through these annual reports you know see what's the debt situation see what the law you know what's the revenue situation the people don't have that luxury. It's, uh, you know, there are certain, I mean, like think tanks, they have the resources and obviously the um, willingness and the capacity to do it, but not everybody has that. Yeah. So that is, you know, a part of the problem because the agents know that okay, the general public doesn't have the capacity to do this so right. even if they find out about corruption mm. and if you go back and you read you know there are lots of reports prepared by these committees on public enterprises and all which list out in great detail some of these corrupt activities but other than the few that make headlines in the newspapers the others are just buried mm. right so it's because the people don't have the uh, you know the time and the resources to invest and actually um, and actually investigate and find out whether everything is you know going well absolutely um, finally uh, Rehana uh, now the government is expected to enact an SOE act to give legislative authority to what's known as uh, an SOE reform policy with um, corporate governance um, best practices and all of that take us through this process sure so at the moment there is a state-owned enterprise restructuring unit that's been established and it is established under the cabinet with cabinet approval mm. but it is not a legal entity and it doesn't have any legal powers yet so the purpose of the SOE law would be to give legal power to this unit to carry out the activities that it needs to do 
um, to let's uh, for example to privatize uh, Sri Lankan Airlines. Mm. It needs to have the legal backing because sure. otherwise what would happen is now suppose we are having an election and there's going to be an upset and suddenly somebody else is at the leadership and they can very easily dismiss this unit and the SOE policy and then that's that. So when you have the law in place then there is a legal you know mandate for this you need to be operating so some of the um, some of the main highlights of the law would be to um, to create a holding company and this holding company will be the i think it will be under the treasury it will uh, it will essentially be all SOEs will come under that unit uh, uh, come under that holding company and that holding company it is going to be similar uh, you know set up similar style to the Singapore Temasek right. uh, company so there will be a, a chairperson there will be a board um, I think there is going to be an advisory board as well all of these will be constituted under the holding company and they will be mandated with managing the SOEs and the uh, treasury will not be involved in the daily operations so there will no there will not be an opportunity for a minister to intervene and uh, you know decide what which bid to choose things like that so that mm. will be done by the uh, so management of the soe and the whole income so there will be greater oversight and scrutiny scrutiny and yes scrutiny is the important thing mm. Mm. So, what's the way forward in terms of SOE reforms? Because it's constantly in the news, but I mean, people are also fed up of hearing about uh, malgovernance, misgovernance. I mean, <sighs> right. So, uh, I mean, similar to the previous elections, I think now corruption is once again the talk of the town. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also whenever you talk about, uh, whenever you talk about. Uh, you know privatization for example there's always going to be a lot of debate about what should be done um, how you should privatize whether you should privatize so the main uh, you know the real thing to get right is the transparency in mm. whatever is being done so you have to be transparent with the you know whether it's the SOE law you have to be transparent whether it is um, um, say uh, investors who are coming in for you know to buy one of the SOE SOEs you have to be transparent because last time in the in 2000 for instance when Sri Lanka Insurance Corporation was privatized there was um, there was some there was an issue with respect to how it was done there were allegations of corruption and the Supreme Court actually overturned the decision to privatize so you have to make sure that this is done in an utterly transparent manner and you have to avoid um, avoid uh, any sort of even hint of corruption because then the public will not support it who has the political will to back such a program so that's that is the that is the i mean it's not favorable to politicians mm -hmm. and to political parties to support the kind of reform agenda that the P, that would benefit the people right because as i said they I mean these these it's like having a you know it's like a play playground that you have no rules in you can do whatever you want there but uh, it is up to the general public and the people to uh, push for these state owned enterprise reforms and to continue to question um, quen continue to question board appointments and uh, I mean people have to be more engaged with the with the whole process okay fantastic thank you very much Rehana Taufik uh, for joining us on the show thank you thank you for watching us we'll see you again tomorrow good night